I hope I am anyway. It'll show me in a minute. I'm wondering, am I even on <laughs> the right page? So nine o'clock is definitely not my normal scheduled broadcast. But I felt like I wanted to share something with you all. So I actually posted uh, about this earlier today. And okay, yes, I'm on the right page. And I said, I want to talk about it. I want to have a conversation about it. I'm speaking from a mindset perspective and the fact that your thoughts become things. I wanted to share seven reasons why women entrepreneurs stay stuck or may find that they are stagnant in their business. And so stagnant can mean a lot of things. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't doing anything but stagnant very well can be from a space of where you desire to be and where you actually are. So we're going to talk about that on this evening. I'm not going to do all seven of the reasons on this broadcast. I think I'll do about four of them. And then tomorrow at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is my normal scheduled broadcast time, I'll do the remainder of those. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Hey, to those of you catching me on the replay, how are you? You could be anywhere else, really, other than here with me. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support, all of you that come on and watch. And um, my goal is to bring you value that you can all actually apply to your life. And uh, my way of bringing value to you is through mainly talking about your mindset. So I'm a transformational growth strategist, business coach, and mentor to women service-based business owners just like yourself. Uh, those who really desire to step into bigger spaces in their life and business. Many of my clients need to rebrand. They've evolved as a person and their brand and business hasn't evolved with them. So oftentimes they find that their business is running their lifestyle instead of funding their lifestyle. And so I give them strategies and tools they can use so that their business no longer runs their lifestyle but funds their lifestyle. I, I help them give themselves permission to step into higher versions of themselves, to really understand their value and their worth and charge it with ease and attract the perfect people into their business so that they can create the business and lifestyle they love. Many of the clients that I work with feel they have a purpose on the inside of them that's pulling and tugging on them to get it out into the world, to be a blessing to others. And they aren't quite sure how to monetize it. So I help them to monetize uh, those things that they really desire to do and step into a new space of abundance in their entire life. If you are teaching, training, coaching someone else, it's your mindset is going to be super important because whatever you're thinking whatever your thoughts are or wherever your mindset is, you're gonna pass it on to the people that you're serving, whether it's your staff in your business or if you're a coach like me or consultant, that mindset, you're gonna pass it on to your clients. And one of the biggest mindsets or one of the biz biggest things that I see by way of causing stagnation in business or being stuck is fear. We're going to talk about that as one of the things I'll share with you this evening. But as a whole, uh, the clients that work with me, one of the very first things that we do in all of my programs is we focus on mindset. Um, our mindset is the way we think about things, how we process a situation, uh, how we face challenges, how we face opportunities, and um, pretty much how we do life. And much of our mindsets are formed in, probably in the womb, <laughs> but in the very early stages of our life through um, sometimes our parents or guardians or experiences that we've had in our lives. And they begin to create thoughts and patterns of how um, we go about life. And those mindsets are the same mindsets that we take into our business building process. And it's one of the reasons why um, people don't charge their worth or their value. Um, I find that many people uh, have a fear-based mindset about really charging their worth. And oftentimes it 
comes from someone who's in the early stages of building their business or um, in a transitional phase of building their business. And so maybe their bank account doesn't match what they feel their services or products are worth and they don't feel worthy of charging them. But you have to know that the value of your product and service has nothing to do with what's in your bank account. Now, eventually they should start to, you know, match and intertwine, but you have to understand your value and your worth to be able to charge from that space. Many service-based business owners are, are undercharging tremendously in their life and their business. And one of the reasons, and I'm not gonna go into detail on that one today, but I will tomorrow, is many people don't know their numbers. We'll talk about that one tomorrow. But I teach from a three-point perspective, being abundance mindset, um, personal growth, and then some amazing business building strategies um, that get real good results. But what I find is that if the mindset doesn't is not in alignment with the level that you desire to go to in your business and in your life, you can use the strategies, but they only work for a season. So I encourage my clients all the time. I teach them mindset tools and strategies that they can use every single day, and they should use them every single day because we're inundated with things all the time in life that can become triggers that throw us back into the thinking we once had. And so I teach abundance mindset principles because it's the space by which you do something really big in the world. Uh, that big goal, dream, or vision that you have on the inside will not manifest beyond your level of belief or your thinking or your mindset. And so we work on that. Um, I find that people at different stages based on their income face different um, challenges in their business building process and most people from zero to their six figure mark a huge thing that they face um, or or problems that they struggle with during that phase is scarcity thinking and lack and it'll show up like um so maybe niching out so one of the things that i you know really suggest that my clients do is niche out many service-based women service-based business owners have tons of ideas and tons of things that they want to do and they want to get out into the world and the difficulty to niche out often comes from a, from scarcity thinking now this is not for anyone to take offense this is completely and fully a training on awareness let me see if I have this. Okay, great. We're hooked up. Um, one second. Let's see where I can do a little something here. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, I still have your attention. I don't know why I thought I could, like, move the screen and it continue to flow. So, I hope you're still rocking with me. Or if not, I hope that you came back on. <clears throat> so, the first thing that keeps women entrepreneurs stuck is fear. Yep, fear. False evidence appearing real. So I was sharing that even the fact that people fear niching out, so it's one of the things people will say, well, I service everybody. If your mindset is that you service everyone, you will never define your brand enough to attract your perfect people. So you're going to pick up everybody. And we all know that what you have simply is not for everyone. And the moment that you begin to give yourself permission to get more specific and more defined about either what your services are or who you're speaking to, everything begins to shift. But when we're operating from a space of fear or scarcity, we think if I only speak to this particular lane of people, or if I only offer these specific services, at least in the beginning, then I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. That's, a, that's scarcity thinking. Because you're going to be able to get more of your perfect people when you've defined what it is that you do and who your service is for, quicker than you would just trying, trying to you know market to everyone or 
service everyone and it's difficult to even create a system in your business that flows for your perfect people if you're trying to service everyone because you're always changing you're always switching you're always doing something different whenever you aren't operating from a space um, that's unique and so fear is often the thing that causes us to do that fear is also the thing that um, doesn't allow many people to invest in what they need for their business because there's this thing that there's no more money or you know um, the money's not going to come but I find that there is actually a flow to money guys and it's the moment that we're hoarding it now I believe you should save it you should be a good steward over your money over your coin but the moment that we're doing it from a space of fear or hoarding the broke dries up I don't know have you Listen, just think back to maybe some times where you may have been in lack and it just seemed like the lack kept coming or things that would cause even more lack just kept appearing, right? Because there is a flow and there's energy behind what you're doing. I won't go too far in it, but as a man thinks, so is he. And at all times, we are attracting people, places, things, and situations into our lives and into our business. And when we do it from a space of fear, what fear begins to do, fear blocks progress. Fear blocks progression. So whenever we're operating from a space of fear, whether we realize it or not, the actions that we're taking, they're not normally progressive action, right? We're doing things out of a space of desperation. And so that's what we usually attract, desperate stuff. Um, <laughs> things that we've attracted from a space of fear. And so it's so important that your belief is in alignment with what it is that you desire to do. Many of you have been holding on to stepping into a new space of expansion and actually growing your brand for quite some time because you're afraid to let go of the thing that you've been doing forever, right? But how many of you know that in order to receive something else, there's gotta be room for it, which often means letting go. Sometimes when you're transitioning to something that's going to produce an even greater profit, you have to let go of some of the things that kind of felt like they were security. And they are security for that level, right? But your next level is always going to require you, one, to get uncomfortable, two, to overcome fear. And it's something that you're going to have to do on a continuous basis. Listen, when fear begins to set in, you begin to go back to the old way you used to do things. So say for instance, if you offer premium services and fear begins to show up in your life or your business, you start um, downsizing what it is that you do, right? You no longer stand fully in that space because of fear. Remember, fear is normally from a scarcity mindset, from scarcity thinking. And so one of the reasons that women entrepreneurs stay stuck is because of fear. Some fear is if I go and really pursue my goals and my dreams, I won't have time for my family. But if you understand that you pursuing your goals and your dreams creates an opportunity for your family to do things with you, um, it also creates opportunity for you to earn more revenue. So some of the tasks and things that you do on a normally normal basis um, can be given to someone else. There is a cleaning business that I like. I wish I knew. I think it's Heavenly Scent, Heavenly something. Um, but I really love how the young lady is building her brand. And things like that are things that we begin to release some of the things that may have traditionally been um, designated as stuff that a woman is supposed to do, right? But as you begin to move into new spaces of expansion, you then create the revenue where some of those tasks that you used to do um, are no longer yours. You've actually blessed someone else's business and given them an opportunity to do something they're really, really great at anyway. Do you guys get that? So fear often stops um, progress. It blocks progress. The next thing that keeps women entrepreneurs stuck is complacency. Now this one is huge because many of you are doing okay. 
not doing too bad in the finance area. You have clients, you have customers, you may even have a consistent flow of customers, but your next level is going to require you to do something different. Your next level is going to require you maybe not to trade your time for dollars as much as you were before, but the fact that you've gotten comfortable and complacent with how you earn the money now, how it's coming in and the level that you're on is what keeps you stuck in that position. So you're always saying in your mind, um, I'm gonna hire some people, or I'm going to step out and start coaching from my level of expertise, or I'm no longer gonna trade my dollars, my time for dollars. I'm gonna create an online program where I can have another stream of revenue where PayPal blings while I'm sleeping. You're saying those things in your mind, right? But complacency will keep you stuck. And it's also connected back to the other reason I gave, which was fear, right? So one of the worst things we can do is allow our last success to make us comfortable. I've seen a lot of people get really comfortable in the space that they're in and stop doing the things that actually got them there. Um, they may feel they no longer have to market. And then one day they wake up and they're like, where are my clients? or this season has been over for me, what do I do now? But they're saying it in desperation instead of from a space of being proactive, right? Proactive is where you know where it is that you wanna step into and you begin preparing for it before it gets to the point where you don't have a choice, right? That's when you're being proactive. So complacency is one of the reasons people stay stuck. And it's also one of the reasons people go into decline because they stay in that comfort zone, that space of security where, you know, you're doing customers, the money is coming in, but on the inside of you, something is saying, I no longer want to do this. This no longer feels right to me anymore, but complacency and the comfort zone keeps you stuck in a space that won't allow you to grow. The next reason women stay stuck is um, service-based business owners, women who are service-based business owners, is because they hire the wrong people. I can't even begin to explain to you all the number of people who share that finding great help is hard. Now, I remember when I first opened my brick and mortar business, within that first year, I was thinking, nobody wants to work, these people don't want to work, this generation, all the things, the things, right? And then I realized that I was hiring all of these people. And so I was the common denominator to the people that were coming to work in my space. And what that said to me was I needed to learn to hire differently. So hiring is a skill set that if you're planning on having a team, developing a team, or bringing t people in, one, you need great systems. You, listen, your job is not really to manage people, it's to manage systems. But before you even get to the space of managing the systems that the team is operating, you have to know what type of team to hire, which... I mean, it's so much I could share on that, but that normally connects to you being clear on who you are as a brand. And many people, this is where fear may show up again in your hiring because we hire from desperation instead of purpose. When you get to a space where you're hiring on purpose and not out of desperation, you're going to find your tribe. You're going to find your vibe, your culture, what you're creating for your brand will switch and many people are stuck because the team that they have or the one that they decided they aren't even going to hire anyone anymore because they had kind of a bad experience the last time is what keeps them from being able to move to new levels and last but not least is and this is so huge Women service-based business owners stay stuck in their business because they lack the support that actually has the capacity for their next level. Your friends and family, more than likely, unless they're entrepreneurs. I'm blessed. Both my parents are entrepreneurs. But even with both my parents being entrepreneurs, they don't always understand my business. I can talk to them about entrepreneurial things. I believe that's a huge advantage that I have, but not necessarily the thing that I'm doing, right? And so many people lack uh, the support that has the capacity to take them to the next level. And that would be one of your greatest investments is investing in being in a tribe or working with a coach. It's, it's something that you deserve. If you've not experienced it, 
is something you'll want to experience. You'll notice the difference of when you have great support and when you don't and how you rock out in your business. And that is my take on today. I also want to remind you for those who miss the Becoming More webinar workshop, there is a replay for that. Right now, it's only 47 bucks. So I don't know how long you've been following me, but those prices aren't even normalcy, right? Hey, Sojo, how are you, dear? Um, you can grab that at bit.ly slash vbmore, bit.ly slash vbmore for that replay. So, so women entrepreneurs stay stuck in their business. I gave you guys four, and tomorrow at 11.30 when I come on on my normal broadcast in the morning, I'll give you the last three. So that was fear, complacency, hiring the wrong team, and lack of support. I can't tell you guys how amazing support is. It's powerful. You guys have a super amazing evening I just wanted to share. I'll see you with the rest of it in the morning. Peace.